Number one question is who wants to work in the bank? Who, who is thinking that after you get your bachelor's degree, you're going to go and work in the bank, the bank industry? Anybody, can you show your hands? Okay. Wow. That's, that's quite impressive. Okay, three people. <coughs> Out. As, as, as the organizers claim to come and claim, guys, you are, you are absolutely right, actually. And you will see soon why. Okay, who's got the smartphone? Not a normal phone, but a smartphone. Who's got the smartphone? Come on, come on, come on, wake up. Okay, who hasn't got the smartphone? Anybody who has a, like a phone like they used to have, you know, like when you were kids, like they used to have, which is doing calls. Okay, nobody. That's good enough. Okay, who has an account in the bank? In his own name, not parents' account, your own account. Okay, who has two accounts in the bank? In, or in two banks? Okay, That's, that shows to you basically where we are. And who uses a smartphone to manage the account, make payments, and so on and so forth? Okay, that tells you basically where we are, I think, as a banking industry and as everything. Uh, Okay, can you get, get, get the presentation here? Uh, I have one more question for you. Let's see the presentation. There's one. Uh huh. Okay, you can make it full screen. So slide number nine. Who knows how these two things relate? <laughs> That's bad. You're old. You're old. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to know. I'm supposed to know. I think Ranieta has done a bad job, and you have, or you have lied about your age. But that's quite cool that you still remember why these two things actually relate to each other. That's quite funny. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you the presentation, but I'm not going to show you all the slides. I'm going to show you some. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to speak about the future of banking. Basically, uh, as you know, like uh, many industries, uh, the banking is uh, under attack at the moment from various kinds of disruptors. Uh, they call them disruptors. So basically, uh, I feel in working in the banking industry, I feel a little bit like a uh, taxi industry was doing before Uber. So uh, I feel that right after the things happen. Although one thing we have to say is that it's not that bad for banking yet, because banks uh, are rich. Uh, there's money in this industry, as you have shown yourself, it's needed. So there's uh, there's a hope. Uh, but in order for this hope to be realized, banks have to be extremely quick. And I'll tell you what actually we do, and then hopefully uh, we will find a way to discuss. So, um, <clears throat> so basically, this is what uh, this is the reasons for this revolution, and uh, basically, what it is is uh, is that uh, things become much faster, and uh, thanks to thanks to a lot of things. But basically, we're living in the age where uh, not only things become faster thanks to internet and various technologies, but also the internet changes our social norms. The things which I have th thought are not possible in, from the point of view of my privacy are happening now. When you use your smartphone app, you pretty much know that it's almost insecure. It's secure, but it's not as secure as it would be if you had a special token, if your password was unbelievable and you wouldn't remember it yourself, and uh, if you had to do... 300 iterations, including getting SMS in order to get into your account. Uh, so, so basically, smartphone, but, but, but it's convenient for you. And uh, when going to the site, you know that they know where you went. And all of a sudden, three months after you searched a ticket to Timbuktu, on a site talking about ping pong, you suddenly see a Google ad that uh, ticket to Timbuktu, and you're not interested in Timbuktu three months already, but you get this ad. 
so they know about you, they, they log you, and, uh, and we're actually okay with that. That's, uh, that's a big change uh, compared to quite a lot of things. The other thing is that the market is changing and uh, a lot of people are coming to innovate the way we fund things. So various things like Kickstarter and so on and so forth, these things happen and uh, they innovate the way things happen. So lending club is lending money to people and a lot of other sort of technological things like Kiwi. Uh, it's a Russian company. It's trying to uh, penetrate us <laughs> banks uh, in the payment services and so on and so forth. So, so things are quite, uh, quite uh, different. So that's why uh, basically uh, the banks are under attack because the customers changed, uh, everything changed and the banks were a little bit late to this party because they thought they're rich and uh, they can do things the way they're protected by the central banks and so on, not anymore. One other big thing is the big data. Obviously, there's a problem with big data because there's more data uh, than we can process, but we're learning to process it. And again, those of us uh, in the industry uh, who are going to be the first, they'll, they'll be okay. Um, so then, uh, okay, okay. so uh, this is an interesting slide. It took radio 38 years to reach an audience of 50 million people. Can you imagine that? 38 years it took radio. It took Facebook one year. It took Twitter nine months, although Twitter, I think, is kind of not feeling that well right now. Internet, three years. iPod, four years. Can you believe it? Almost 40 years to reach 50 million audience. So that tells you basically how things are changing. So basically, uh, this is uh, the way the landscape is working. And uh, what I basically want to show you here is that uh, the banks are part of the big group of related services. And uh, the pie is actually much bigger. And although we can say that, for example, the banks are somewhere sort of in the middle or somewhere, uh, they can expand themselves. So they're getting attacked, but they can attack the attackers. The banks don't need to sit still and wait for people to kind of crash them. They can go into various, and they're trying to go, into these various services. Now, whether they'll be successful or not is, is different, uh, because I'll show you what the business model of the banks should be uh, going uh, forward. But one of the bad things about the current disruption in the banking market is the fact that these, these bad people who want to take our business away, they select and cherry pick the spheres where they can be quick, which, which have a lot of money or which have a lot of customers. They don't want to do a lot of things we have to do. For example, they don't want to report a lot of strange things to our central bank, for example. They don't want to comply with various license requirements. They select, for example, some customer related thing and go there, like, like happened with payments, for example, where there's been an enormous number of disruptors like PayPal. Again, in Russia, it was Kiwi and other things. So unfortunately, <laughs> they want us to do the bad things uh, as the banks and they want everybody else to do the good things. So uh, that's uh, one of the unfortunate things. So uh, I'll, I'll go on with the presentation. So next one, I wanted to show you this. Uh, this shows you uh, an example of an average day of a, of a person, of a digital person living today. And what you see from this day is that you kind of constantly on and off with your smartphone, with your tablet or something else. And there's a lot of interrelated activity. That's, why we're, what, that's what I'm saying about the banks who can attack the disruptors themselves. Because a lot of these interrelated activities are trying to attack the banks. So, I don't know, the company which is, uh, which is uh, I don't know, selling you flowers wants to 
uh, use, uh, I don't know, there's this is somebody who wants to provide payment services to the flowers company or to the postcard company or to all the internet business so that it's nice and convenient and not cumbersome, like, for example, it's the bank next door. So somebody does that and disrupt this process. But the banks can go on and buy a flower shop, as an example, and uh, kind of get there. So, uh, so basically, as we go on and the day becomes digital, uh, it's, uh, it's quite... It's quite becomes quite convenient to leave in a way, and it's very difficult to distinguish payments from non-payments, banking from non-banking. It becomes one and the same, and uh, and it becomes convenient. You don't need to to do a lot of very difficult tasks. So, for example, when you see I want to send my friend flowers, as an example, you don't feel. I actually don't want to do it because I then have to go into the payment site and at the payment site I'll have to enter a huge number of passwords. It's going to be very inconvenient. Maybe I do it some other time or I, I actually end up not doing it. So it becomes extremely convenient so that it's very easy for you. They want to own you. And they will. So here is uh, the slide I wanted to show you. So the banking here. Yeah, it does, it works. It's unbelievable, Renepa. You constantly amaze me with the technologies. So this is three, billion, three trillion dollars. This is. And this is, ah, I actually even can do it. This is 24 trillion dollars. So obviously these guys go and want to disrupt us. And we want to go and disrupt them. Uh, that's kind of the way it's supposed to work. And there it shows you all the various disruptors. So obviously Google uh, is uh, probably one of the sort of biggest one and most known one. But it doesn't mean it's the, it, it's the only one. There's loads of them and uh, all of them want to take over. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, reasons and there's a lot of things. There's like convenient things. Like as an example, invoicing, like it's a convenience thing. Or there's a sort of big data CRM, so people who know what, uh, what we are doing and they sell this and they try to sell this. And the reason for all of this really happening is quite simple. You don't want to learn about the ticket to Timbuktu when you don't need the ticket to Timbuktu. But it's very nice to kind of get a tailor-made offer. Not the offer which has nothing to do with you. You probably get a lot of SMS or get a lot of advertisement or emails or some other, and you used to, to have it, and you, you suddenly get it, and you understand that these guys are probably coming from another planet by sending this to you. It has nothing to do with you. You are completely uninterested in that. Why the hell did they send it? And this is so-called Vir Nera Silk, so when they send it to thousands of people hoping that there's going to be one who is going to choose this service. That's the only reason. So this is not the way it's going to work. If we want to sell ourselves to you, we've got to make it tailor-made. So, so we've got to know about you much more uh, than, than, than we do today. And it's got to be extremely right, what we know, because you will get extremely pissed off because you become impatient, because you get a lot of information. You don't want uh, to lose your time by reading offers, which you do not need. Therefore, it's basically, I mean, we all become very <laughs> impatient today. So we do not want to be bothered with people who do not understand what we want, although we do not want to, be, to actually bother ourselves by explaining what we actually want. So these two things are kind of happening simultaneously. But nevertheless, that's the way things are. So, um, so we've got to take this into account, and banks have to find their way. Uh, basically, we have to find our way some, somehow. So um, I wanted to show you what the bank of the future will be. And this is definitely a very different organization. This is McKinsey's view what it's going to be, but uh, I think it's not uh, it's not very different from what I actually I think. So I mentioned to you personalization, 
as the key. Uh, I, I mentioned to you extended proposition. I, you do not want to have the bank anymore. You want, you want convenient things. So you want it all to work simultaneously. And who does it bank, non-bank? You actually don't care. You want to get the service. I mentioned to you a uh, change in the back office, in the, in the way the banks work. This is big data, this is uh, seamless operations, this is fast, and this is completely IT. But what it means inside is that it's got to be flexible, modular, it's got to adjust for changing environment, for changing time. And uh, I mentioned, I didn't mention to you, but it means complete change to the organization, so-called digital age, they call it. Basically, what it means is that you can't have 12 layers of management anymore. It doesn't simply work. Because basically, then you cannot make any decisions. It's extremely bureaucratic, and so on and so forth. And so you've got to, you've got to change inside. And I guess that's actually one of the biggest challenges for banks, non-banks, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, this is another one I wanted to show you. So uh, basically, uh, as I mentioned, the banks are probably going to be trying to protect themselves. They can't protect their own business, so they will try to uh, attack related businesses by, by going into that. So buying payment systems or buying marketplaces, that's actually quite... A lot, I mean, quite a lot discussed, and there's, there's a lot of another needs. Uh, for example, uh, getting cooperation with general offers and so on and so forth, understanding your payment patterns, and therefore offering you discounts based on these payment patterns, i.e. not just the credit card the way we used to offer, and the way we offer today. Like in my bank, you can get a credit card in partnership with the Russian oil company, Lukoil. So each time you buy gasoline, you get some more cashback and so on and so forth. It's not going to be that. It's going to be trying to understand. So you like gasoline, you like Pokemon, you like I don't know what. So we're going to offer you pack Pokemon and gasoline uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the way it's going to be working. So uh, let me show you this. So uh, basically, uh, this is showing you the, what, the, what the banks uh, are trying to do uh, already. So uh, one thing I'll mention about us, I have our case study to show you, not in presentation mode, but basically I'll tell you by words, but I'll mention that one of our businesses in our group has introduced the first Facebook uh, Messenger payment bot. Uh, I haven't personally used it because it's for small business, it's not for... Uh, private individuals, and I don't have my own small business, uh, so I can't I can't use it. But we introduced it last week, so so basically we we kind of also trying to enter this race, and it's not us as the Atkritia Group. It's basically our business called Tochka, which is providing services for small and medium enterprises. I'll I'll tell you actually why we do things the way we do, but uh, basically these are some of the. Uh, examples of what competitors or, or global competitors are doing. Uh, and what it is is that everybody is trying to find their strategy to basically uh, answer the current uh, challenges. So the other thing uh, which I uh, wanted to uh, show you is uh, that. Yes. Uh, basically uh, I wanted to mention to you that it's not just the way we interact changes, but it also changes the way the bank works. So, um, and you've got to understand uh, this in terms of, because this is all based on our data. So we do not want to analyze your credit based on what information you provide us. We also want to download what you do in Facebook, what you do in Twitter, what you do in Instagram. Or and any Snapchat, any other application, it's just uh, there the knowledge of, m my knowledge of applications finishes, uh, what children told me. But uh, basically, there's probably some other data we want to download, the way you interact on your smartphone, how much time you use for calls, what are your patterns, 
even to your geographical patterns, because we want to give you credit based on all this data. I mean, obviously, if we can, because the maybe we don't have digital capabilities to actually analyze all that. But fundamentally, that's what we want. But then what you will want from us is you will want this uh, credit to be tailor-made. You wouldn't want a loan for 12 months. You would want a loan, I don't know, for three days or, f I don't know, 30 days, whatever. But it, you will, maybe it's not going to be even a loan. So, so basically, this is, uh, this is talking about risk management. Uh, given that none of you want to be in the banks, I probably wouldn't uh, spend too much time on this. Uh, but uh, basically, it's got to change the whole, uh, uh, the whole system. It's not enough to just change uh, the, uh, the customer end. So the other uh, thing is, uh, is uh, what I've mentioned to you a couple of times, is uh, client orientation and understanding exactly what you need. Uh, rather than offering you a deposit for six months, we will have to offer you a deposit uh, for, I don't know, the number of days you want uh, with special conditions related to you. Today we can't do it, but I'm sure that in no time we'll be able to do it. Uh, and uh, hold on. I think that. Um, and this is one thing which is uh, extremely important. The banks are big. Uh, they have a lot of employees, they have branches, uh, they have loads of things. So in order for them to survive, they've got to become lean. Uh, they've got to really uh, get themselves down. So what does that mean? That means getting rid of some of the branches, not all, because still branches is one of the best uh, ways to promote. When you see branch, you kind of feel safe because the branch is there working. You actually maybe don't need it anymore but it's kind of nice to have. It's a brand, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a brand thing also. So, but eventually the branches, I think, will have to mostly go away. Second thing is uh, about the layers of management I mentioned. So this has got to change. I, that's got to really go away in the banks. The banks have to become less bureaucratic and any layer of management is a whole number of people. It's basically a huge cost. So, uh, and, also, uh, and also becoming more digital, uh, more uh, pushing more things into IT and uh, requiring less people for that. So basically that's, uh, that's kind of the, uh, the, the way the future looks for banks uh, and the way things uh, got to change. So uh, here I wanted uh, to show you this slide. Um, this is a good example of uh, Xiaomi uh, versus Apple. Uh, that's, uh, that's a very interesting example of, um, uh, first of all, Xiaomi changed the model in terms of they don't sell you the phone, they also sell you the services. So they've got their own operating system and they, they kind of sell you, sell you that. So they changed the model and therefore a good phone with good capability is actually quite cheap. And secondly, they change based on constant customer feedback. And uh, they became uh, so-called agile in terms of uh, they change the version of their software quite often. And this is, uh, this is basically the way their business model works. And that's why they started to sell more smartphones uh, than Apple. So um, basically, uh, what is... Uh, uh, what, what, what should the traditional banks do? Uh, why do I ask this question or why do I show you the slide? The whole, the whole reason why I show you the slide is because that's, that's what I actually do in the office. Uh, or I think that's what I'm supposed to do in the office. Or that's what my shareholders are supposed to pay me for. Uh, they probably don't know this, but uh, because I've got to think about how to, to get uh, to the future. And I don't have uh, a lot of choices. Either uh, can, I can use three models. Number one, change the bank, which I have, and uh, try to change it on the go. Number two, I can, uh, in, the, in the bank, which is soon to be obsolete, I can create so-called digital attackers inside myself. And uh, third is start from scratch, basically. Kill the old thing. Uh, I'll tell you in a second what 
we are doing. And um, uh, basically, this is the way revolution works uh, in, 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 in banks, but in my opinion, it's kind of true for any industry which wants to revolutionize. It's not just about buying the right software, it's about mindset, it's about changing organization, it's about changing culture, and obviously becoming completely digital. So, uh, so that, means, uh, that means a huge challenge. For us, it's the biggest challenge, and I think not for us, but for anybody working in our industry, is the fact that we're regulated. And a lot of things which we do and the way we do are told to us by central banks, so we've got to change them as well. So here is a good example uh, to you, another one like Xiaomi Apple. Uh, this is uh, Blockbuster and uh, Netflix. Uh, they pretty much established at the same time. Uh, and this is the way they attacked uh, or they changed their business model evolving with their customers. So what is the end result? Uh, 2010 Blockbuster uh, is bankrupt and Netflix is, uh, is booming. And this is about being open, this is about being innovative and not ignoring the way things are. And uh, that should be a great reminder for us in the banking industry. And this is kind of things which I constantly, for example, try to think about. Now, uh, I'm done with my presentation. Let me put on a nice slide which will kind of uh, try to show you what the banks are, in my opinion. And we can talk. <coughs> it's a big presentation. And it's not mine. But it, it kind of, yes, that's the one. <coughs> so, I wanted to uh, tell you a bit about us and uh, how does that all relate. So the key challenges for us, uh, for my group, uh, where I work, is, uh, is the following. We are the result of the merger of 14 banks, one four. So we have eight general ledgers, we have 16 CRM systems, we have a whole number of other things. And, uh, and we are constantly integrating. And the moment we think it kind of stopped, uh, we buy something else. And this is like a constant evolving process because we want to be big and uh, so on and so forth, and, 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 and the time is changing. So how do, what, what solution did we find? Um, number one solution for us was the brand. We are not Sberbank, we are not uh, one of these huge Russian brands which everybody knows, we are not Coca-Cola, we, uh, we are not known through a whole history, so we had to invest quite a lot uh, in the brand. And uh, we have invested today we think that in the banking market we are quite well known in Russia at least and that's what we need for our, our core business in Russia and uh, so and, and we think we are known uh, in an okay sphere i.e. we are known as solid, we are known as uh, robust, we are known as private we are known as universal so this is kind of what, what polls show us <laughs> don't tell me the truth um, <coughs> so that's talking about brand. Number two is costs. Uh, because when you merge all of this, you become enormously cost inefficient. So we basically launched uh, a big program of uh, cost cuts and cost innovation. So changing our network and so on and so forth. And in three years, we're cutting basically 40% of our costs. And uh, so far, we, it's been a year and a half, and we're on target. So, so we, 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 which I personally couldn't believe, uh, but we are on target. So hopefully we achieve that. So number one is brand uh, and moving your brand. Number two is costs, so being efficient and so on. Number three is making money. And this is not in terms of priorities. This is probably in, in the way I tell you. Number three is uh, products. And, uh, and this is the biggest challenge. You've got to have a product offering. And you've got to be moving to, to, towards where I said to, you, to move to the tailor-made. So obviously we have also invested in various, way, in various products and so on. So number of uh, products we invested in is, for example, our Airflot credit card. So 
Airflot is number one Russian airline. It flies all over the place. Used to be international now, local, domestic as well. And so we have invested and we do the credit card with Airflot. So frequent travelers can uh, basically get more miles and so on and so forth. So this is the way we invest into, into products like we are in the, pri in the private banking field, we are uh, we're number one in mortgages. So we keep on investing in this and, and so on and so forth. So we select different products and we invest into them. But then we started to change uh, our model. And uh, uh, do you know the uh, programming term APIs? 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 Anybody knows what it is? Okay, it's uh, access protocol. Basically what it is, is this is what Apple done with, the, with, their, uh, with their App Store. They, they basically said this is our ecosystem, this is our uh, operating system. And we will introduce so-called APIs, i.e. bridges how you can, with your own programs, enter our ecosystem and make money on this. So, this is, so we decided to use the same approach. We decided that because we cannot reform our bank quickly, we're going we're gonna to basically attack it ourselves in a way. So, so, so we decided that we can't... Uh, it's going to take time for us to clean up all the mess which is coming from the mergers. So we basically created the APIs and started to build businesses around us. So the first business we started to build was called Tochka. So we bought a team, software, solution, business process of working with small and medium enterprises. Actually, more small and medium small, not, not kind of. So it's in, in ruble terms, it's 100 million rubles, 100 employees. Uh, and this is completely crazy business run by crazy people who basically who put the customer in the first place and build the business around customer. They don't give the loans, they open accounts, uh, but <clears throat> they do it in a great way so you can open it on Skype. You do not need to come to the office. And they actually don't have offices. They sit in Ekaterinburg. And it's, it's completely different. They have their own Bible, customer Bible, where it said that uh, it's okay if your employee wakes you up at four in the morning if the customer demands. Uh, don't, don't hesitate to call your boss because it's the customer demands. So if the customer demands, this is the, your number one priority, no matter where you are, what time and so on. So. They, they, it's, it's like an ecosystem. These guys are completely anti-banking, which is good. And uh, so, we, so we acquired them and we set them up separately. We didn't integrate them. We didn't put them into ourselves. We put them separately like moon next to earth where hopefully we are earth not moon and um, and what changed before we bought them we were opening 3000 accounts per month right now we're opening 11 account thousand accounts per month 4000 opens this business tochka but 7000 opens our own internal business which got scared to death understanding that thinking that we will move all the business to tochka all this business so so they created actual internal disruption internal competition the way our internal business improved is unbelievable <laughs> when we when we got not because they've stolen something from Tochka, it's impossible Tochka is an ecosystem it's a different it's 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 basically disruptive so you can't just steal it you can't do it you've got but the way our system changed is unbelievable so we had the most positive results so then we did the same with um, with the credit card business, we bought a business called Rocket Bank. Uh, it's not a bank. It's uh, and and there's a Rocket Bank in the U.S. But but it's different. It's a Russian uh, offspring, which is uh, which is a credit card company. And again, it's built around customer. It's all about chats. It's uh, in the in the application. It's all about application. When I myself opened a credit card with them, I thought that the credit card is your ticket to be using the app. This is the way you feel. The way the app is trying to sell you itself and all the payments, all the services, how convenient it is, is you almost feel the credit card is not needed. So, so basically, the credit card is your application. And again, we had, uh, we had an unbelievable success uh, with this because it improved our, uh, our work with, uh, with individuals all over the place. I mean, we have introduced the new release of our main app, which is uh, full redesign and full change. And this is all inspired by the fact that we bought Rocket. We saw how they work with customers. We saw how customers love it. 
and so on so forth. So, so basically changed the way ourselves. And, and it started to get, all of a sudden, the bank with the most absolute technology, or not with the most, I mean, there are bigger dinosaurs than us, uh, but with a lot of absolute technology, with a lot of mergers, with a lot of challenges, suddenly we actually uh, introduced a Facebook Messenger bot, payment bot. Uh, yes, Tochka, but they wouldn't be able to introduce it if, if they couldn't work through the system, through our... Because they're still part of us. They're kind of as hub and spoke. They're not exactly integrated into us, but... But a lot of things they use, they use our infrastructure. So we found a way, and, and, and we actually think we want to move that way. So what did we do since then? We created internal startup in so-called factoring. It's basically pretty boring stuff, uh, uh, basically service related to clients of big, cor big corporates. So when corporates buy something, uh, sometimes clients want to get loans for this and so on. So but we introduced internal startup for that. Uh, so we moved this team away and we said to them, build like Tochka, build like Rocket, build your own small empire and integrate into us separately. So, so we did that. Now we're doing the same with uh, mortgages. We basically said, okay, let's mortgage is a big business of ours, but let's just do the full digital redesign of this product and let's introduce it. So we kind of moved, um, so coming back to this presentation, we kind of moved in a different model. So what we said is that we can't do anything. We, we're going to be changing the bank, but it's going to be slowly. So we will do all the startups around ourselves, which will belong to us, which will work under one sort of set of rules internally. But we're not going to be preventing these people from creativity. We will allow them to kind of be a little bit separate from us, so to feel to feel the way they want and to create and to be lean and so on and so forth. And not to be told that in five year time it, we're going to change our IT systems and then you will be able to be customer friendly and customer rated. So that's basically uh, what we've done to us. I think uh, here I'm going to uh, stop and uh, probably uh, would like to see if you have any questions or or replicas or anything about what I've told. I don't know if that was interesting, not interesting, but I uh, would be interested to hear your opinion. Hi. All right, my question is, sorry, my name is Dauda Kazazabank, and my question is, um, there were some major, uh, major facts you mentioned about the banking industry and most of this money-making applications and mediums for transfer, um, transferring money. We also observed, I also observed that um, based on researching, you, you, okay, you, you said something about researching the geolocation of people's movements, um, their, their patterns of activities on Twitter and Facebook. Doesn't this uh, directly affect the privacy of a client? And a second question is, um, concerning the banking industry and the negative attack, on the banking industry, the like PayPal, Kiwi, and many of the sorts uh, of conv many many of the convenient, more convenient uh, mediums of money transfer that we have, isn't it a blessing in disguise for the banking industry that there's there is competition now and they have to up their game? Isn't it, it isn't it possible for them to find a method of training um, the staff to be more polite, more um, act more quickly and respond more quickly to customers, provide more seats in the bank because sometimes the frustration of having to stand in a queue could make you just leave and those are the kind of problems we have in the bank. How do we intend to solve these problems? Okay, you've got 
three questions. Uh, number one is uh, about privacy. Uh, number two is about attackers, and number three is about customer orientation. So um, uh, I'll speak first about privacy. I think uh, fundamentally, uh, kind of the privacy is unfortunately almost gone, uh, in my opinion. Uh, secondly, I think we actually agree to a big part to it. Uh, that, that it's actually gone. On one side, we, we, we kind of want to have some privacy, and Apple is fighting this war, and, uh, and uh, I'm obviously also looking after, but from the point of view of uh, data collection about what you do and how you do it and uh, what are your interests, from that point of view, the privacy also is almost gone. It's your choice if you want to be registered on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and all the other apps. It's your choice if you want to uh, tag yourself uh, and uh, basically, not tag, but basically locate yourself, show where, what your location is and uh, so on and so forth. It's, it's obviously your choice, but fundamentally I think uh, a lot of our privacy is gone. And uh, I wouldn't say that all of it, but, but quite a lot. So. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily need to be, it's actually, it actually does not. I mean, as far as we're concerned, what we want is we do not want you to feel when you open up your email or if you open up your SMS or any other medium where we sent you a message, we don't want you to feel where these guys are coming from in reading the offer. For example, you've got, I don't know, 100 bucks in, in, in your pocket and we offer you a Rolls Royce as an example uh, or any other things. We don't want to bother you because you are, as I mentioned, you become, and I become as well, I mean we all become quite impatient, i.e. We, we do not want to, because there's so much time wasted in, in what we're trying to do, we do not want to waste it anymore and we feel really bad about people who waste our time. So if you bank where you opened up, for example, your account, starts making offers to you which are completely unrelated to you, then most probably you will feel quite bad about this bank and eventually you would leave. The same, in my opinion, with the lines in, in, in branches and so on. Number one is this is why I think branches are not going to be gone for some time because there's always going to be customer and there's always going to be ser some service which needs to be done in branches. Although. In my opinion, their role will be reducing. How they will change, what they will change, I don't know. But that's statement number one. Statement number two, if your bank has a line in your branch, and if it takes you as much time to stand at this line as to feel you want to leave this branch, change the bank. Basically, in my opinion, change the bank and find yourself another bank where there's not going to be a line. Uh, and and at least in Russia, at least in Russia, in my opinion, we are in a situation where we can actually do it. Maybe if we leave very, very far and in a very kind of uh, secure, uh, uh, in a very secluded place, there's not going to be a big offering. But at least if we leave in one of the big towns, we certainly can do and we can choose. And we can choose safely, i.e. There's, uh, there's, in my opinion, I mean, everybody is saying that Russian Central Bank takes away a lot of licenses and so on and so forth. I mean, there's still a big number of banks which, uh, which after the small research, will be considered safe. So there is competition and you can find it. In my opinion, this is what you should do. Uh, the same, in my opinion, with the, with the call centers and so on and so forth. This is quite a lot of things, in, at least what we invest, that people are polite. But apart from polite, Polite is not enough. It's extremely annoying when every time you call a banking, a banking uh, call center, you have to enter things from scratch. And if the call suddenly disconnects, you've got to start from scratch. This is the biggest disaster, which I personally feel, uh, is remembering a call to a call center of something, of some service, waiting 20 minutes in line to state the problem, wait for solution and to be disconnected at the time. And the way the emptiness you feel is just almost unbelievable because then you, 
I mean, I guess that's why I, for example, now use probably mostly email if I have any problem and I, I just write, I, I just stopped calling. But nevertheless, this is a big challenge. Uh, no new. And this is when it comes to privacy. This is the challenge. Because on one side, you want your privacy to protect yourself. So you don't want the big, uh, the big kahuna, the big machine to know about you. But on the other hand, it's so convenient when you call the bank and they pick up the phone and there's a very nice sexy voice who says, Hello, Ruben. And you kind of feel, yes, yes, I've arrived. I don't need to tell my 28-digit number customer, which I should remember from the top of my head. And then I don't need to tell the PIN, which I'm supposed also to know, but there's an app for this. Uh, for saving my opinion, so on. so that's that's in my opinion uh, the way things are. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Hi, thank you. My name is Johanna. Um, uh, I have a question. You were talking about technology and bank and banks, and uh, you also said that we will see the branches like for more time than uh, uh, expected. Um, in my opinion, and uh, as I know. Um, Banks are working on turning money into di digital numbers than cash because it's easy to transfer the money and moving money is make, it makes more money for the banks. So don't you think that uh, turning money into digital numbers will uh, make the branches disappear? And the other question is, will we see the te uh, te uh, technical or technology uh, companies controlling the banks through the apps and uh, the bank's technology. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I feel that the branches are still needed. At least that's what I feel. Because they're still... Uh, I mean, my parents, they're there. I mean, and uh, yes, my mom is using Facebook. Uh, but my dad is not using Facebook. And they're 80 years old. And, uh, and, and I can probably get my mom to use an app. Uh, for the bank, but I think for her going to the branch is still more convenient. Uh, although I think bas basically kind of using children for banking is, uh, is probably uh, more convenient because they don't feel like going too much anymore and so on. But nevertheless, this is, uh, this is the case. So the branches are still needed. Secondly, like we learned with ourselves, because we're not a known brand, because we kind of came from nowhere and started to develop the brand. For us, the branches helped. Because the branches is your constant advertising. So for us, it helped at least from that point of view. So in my opinion, they're going to be for some time. Talking about the banks turning money and making money and so on and so forth. Let's, rem I mean, you guys may remember when um, this phone is for the, from the company called MTS, i.e., this is an Apple iPhone, but, uh, but the network here is MTS. And uh, it used to be the time when MTS was making huge amounts of money uh, per customer. Uh, and they were entering into the application business and so on and so forth. So today, today, mobile uh, providers, mobile phone providers are almost like electricity companies. They're like wires. All the money I actually made by people who are here, apps. These are the people who make money. And the guys who produce this phone are making money. But the guys who actually transfer the signal are not making money anymore. Furthermore, their business gets more and more attacked. They completely lost it. They had an opportunity, but they lost it. I think it can be the same with the banks. That's the risk, that the banks become a wire system. But what, what is transferred through this wire system, they have no knowledge and they have no participation and they're not making any money. That's the biggest risk. That's what we are trying to actually find a way to, to basically change as far as we're concerned. But how successful we're going to be, we don't know. Thank you, Ruben Abelovich, for the presentation. My name is Asselbeck. I'm representing Kyrgyzstan on this forum. Uh, my question is, um, recently the highest high-tech giants has, uh, have represented their paying systems. So we have got Google Wallet, Alipay, and there are many more coming 
uh, up, I'm sure, and how are uh, their traditional banks are going to tackle those challenges of those huge giants because they have bigger high-tech infrastructure than you guys, and it's very hard for us to now um, to imagine the bank of the future. And my second question is, um, you've, you're controlling the group of companies you're letting um, has the assets of about $30 billion, and you're re recently you were ranked at number eight at the highest, like, top eight managers in Russia by Forbes. What are your keys for success? Thank you. Yes, I hate this Forbes rating. It has nothing to do with reality, unfortunately. I'm constantly talking about my bosses, about starting to get paid the way they said. Uh, number two is uh, talking about... Um, uh, talking about the marketplaces, I think that the banks are going to be buying marketplaces as well. That's what I meant when I was showing that it's uh, not necessarily this 24 trillion industry needs to eat the banking industry. It's three trillion dollar banking industry can expand into the fields related. Um, sort of Google is uh, to me a little bit unnatural in that field. It's more Amazon who is very natural for me, because Amazon started as a logistics. I mean, actually, finally, Bezos was uh, working in the banking industry, and he was working in the middle office, and he's been involved with processes, the way things happen in the bank. And, and he's, he's a logistics uh, genius, apart from just overall visionary. Uh, that's how they started, and then they moved into related. They moved into some form of delivery, into some form, although they outsource this. They have a very working uh, sort of delivery system, post services. And then they moved uh, into related services, like Amazon moved into the software farms and into server farms, uh, but they also moved into, they, they're starting all these guys to move into pay, like Alipay and so on. I agree with you. My view is that the banks and the payment systems, like Kiwi and others, may move into the marketplace. Uh, some form of cooperation or, or, or joining may happen there. Uh, I wouldn't be speaking, I know, that, I know about some of the trades which happen in Russian market, which are not announced, but which are rumored uh, to be happening. But that's, in my opinion, the way things may develop. So, uh, talking about uh, challenges and uh, successes uh, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, in, my, in my opinion, the key, uh, the key uh, is, uh, is about people. So, number one, uh, find good people to work with. And these people ideally should be stronger than you. Uh, number two, don't stop. Constantly invest in developing these people. I, don't, don't stop. Don't... don't uh, don't hesitate to spend money on training, on learning. Uh, sort, of, sort of recognize that you constantly have to learn. You have to learn through the process, like through Renepo. You have to learn through other people and other things. And, uh, and I guess then, then it's going to be, then, then, then you will find some form of success. Uh, in my, but in, in my opinion and in my experience, it has nothing to do with anything except people. It's all, about, it's all about people. It's all about being with the right guys in the right place, and uh, then, then things happen. And in my opinion, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all over the place. It's, uh, it's the, I, th I think it's in a lot of businesses, not just banking. Or Uh, hello, uh, my name is Ricardo, and you have been talking about the future of banks. I would like to know uh, your view about how uh, will be the future professionals banking industry need. Thank you. In my opinion, that's. Uh, I think. I think overall, it's a big uh, question uh, about the future. Uh, you probably yourself uh, saw reports about the fact that, uh, that a lot of things get automated and a lot of people who used to be certain jobs are not needed, like uh, big data. A, big data. a lot of big data analysis is machine-based, not just people-based. 
people write some algorithms, but a lot of this is outsourced. And um, I think it's overall, there's a big question what professions are going to be needed. And to be honest, uh, I think it's a, it's a more challenge for you than, for example, for me, I'm more than 40 years old. So, so basically, uh, so hopefully there's going to be a job for me going forward for some time. Uh, but what about you? I mean, it's quite important for you to choose the job or to choose the way of life which would allow you uh, to survive the change in the, in the way things work. There's, a, there's an interesting example about uh, Russia. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of towns with old plants with old, like some of them are still working and there's quite a lot of people working, like sometimes thousands. And, uh, and, and there are some people coming and saying, let's innovate, let's change it, let's change these plants. But then what happens is if you innovate 2,000 plant, there's going to be 400 people left. So what do you do with one and a half thousand? I mean, you have helped the town you have created the state of the art enterprise. So it's not an old anymore. It's working, its products are needed. But actually, but did you do a good thing? You have one and a half thousand unemployed people. And these people are in the age where they don't start life from scratch. So, so in my opinion, we're coming to an age and banking industry including. I mean, let's, let's face it, we have uh, since uh, the end of 2014, I think we have, we as the group have fired uh, about a quarter of our personnel, about a quarter. And in my opinion, this is banking industry-wide in Russia. So, so that's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Because we live in Moscow, we do not have these people on the street. But I don't know about you, but a lot of people, I, I hear from people and my friends and so on and so forth, they have various challenges finding jobs. Uh, and, uh, and in my, so, so we certainly live through challenging time. And uh, how it's going to be, to be honest, I don't know. What I know is that I've already been in one industry which almost became obsolete. This happened not because of in world trends. This happened because of the way business was moving in Russia. It basically, it's Russia and its business model or country business model. That's what changed my previous industry or, or killed it almost, but still unfortunate. Uh, okay, my name is Rachel. I would like to ask two questions. Uh, my first question to you is, considering um, a bank that has merged other banks within it and Considering each and every one of these banks has different goals, different visions, how do you manage the conflict within this merge? How do you solve the issue of one, you know, because we have different banks coming together and probably the goal is the same, to make profit and to serve your customers, but each bank might have a different way of achieving this task. So how do you solve the conflict and choose a solution in which everybody is okay and you can work together? Uh, my second question is, uh, I would like to go into the investment industry and considering you have invested in a lot and it's obvious you have succeeded in this field, I would like to know what are the criteria for investing, how do you pick what companies to invest into or to buy and how do you manage them after investing into it so that you don't lose your money and there's minimal risk? Okay, uh, number one uh, is yes, uh, certainly there's different cultures. Uh, probably the cultures is the biggest problem, not the way people address things. Cultures is the biggest problem. We have been quite slow integrators, to be honest. I mean, compared to, if you ask McKinsey guys how to integrate, they will tell you cutthroat quickly, as quickly as you integrate, as uh, more business you will save, and so on and so forth. There are different rules. We've been actually quite different to that. Uh, and, uh, and, and in my opinion, actually too much, uh, almost too much, too much slow, too slow uh, in integrating. Uh, however, uh, in recent times, uh, now we're merging the two mega banks. We were merging small into, into, and then we ended up with two banks, one for corporate clients, one for retail clients. 
and now because of the cost pressure. Uh, before we thought that we should keep them separate and the idea was uh, different DNA. I, a retail bank needs to be fast, agile, quickly changing, sort of almost like an internet company and corporate bank needs to be solid and blah blah blah. That's what we thought. But then the costs have said their word. I, basically it's not about profits anymore, it's much more about costs as well. So we decided to merge. So now we're finishing. And there we went slightly different way. I, on day one we announced who's going to be the boss. I, for each key leading, uh, leading uh, business we announced who's going to be the boss. And then this boss started to be the boss. <coughs> and, and a lot of questions went away <coughs> about how do we do things, basically which way we choose, because we have announced who's going to be, uh, who's going to be the, the thing. The merger is a process. It's much more about the process. What is right, what is wrong, when I merged exchanges, I, I merged them quickly. I announced bosses quite quickly. I mean, it's been political, unfortunately. It's not, it wasn't just business related, but I announced people quite quickly and then allowed these people to come up with the plans, how they're going to do it, check that they don't fire the key people, and then allowed them to go on with their business. And this was a successful merger. The company went to the public market and now traded quite well. So, so this uh, certainly happened. Regarding investment criteria and so on and so forth, uh, uh, we as the group are not that good investors in businesses outside of the uh, financial sector. We've been quite successful, in my opinion, with some of the financial sector investments. <coughs> there, we had, uh, good, uh, uh, there we had some good advantage, we understood it. However, however, we became that successful with Tochka, with Rocket and so on and so forth when we hired the right guy. And this guy was uh, from the sort of from the venture capital side, but he couldn't build uh, his fund into a big thing. So he felt that uh, he felt that he is not really getting some of the trades because he thought he's going to be bigger by the time, but he wasn't. So he started to work. For, he started to look for a job, and we hired him, and he's been a big change for us. I mean, he brought a lot of trades, he brought a lot of activity, and so on and so forth. But then. It's been a system. I, we were ready for that, and uh, and uh, I was ready to prove it. Uh, and but they presented good business plan. But then they were ready to implement it because you can't imagine how difficult it is when your bank is sort of is a big machine, bureaucratic machine, to suddenly have a satellite next to you. And the satellite is young, nice, looking kind of. Uh, uh, fast moving and so on, and you sort of old, obsolete, almost on the way to the cemetery. Obviously, you want to take this sort of small satellite together with you, but he, he said, I, I don't care, I don't want to go with you. And this is the way the relationship between the big banks and this kind of things we build out on outside. It's challenging, so you have, so, so our key managers have to push for the system to work, and, and they pushed and it worked, and uh, all, the, all the businesses we started to build that way ahead of their budgets. So, but, but again, it's, uh, <laughs> it was about people, but then it was also about rigorous analysis. I, we had to understand, like Rocket Bank, they, were, uh, they had a platform before us, they were not that successful. We had to measure how successful they're going to be uh, doing that. But then we had some failures. We had one product which we thought will be a bomb, which everybody will want and so on and so forth, and we launched it, and we spent a lot of money, but this product <laughs> basically didn't. So we do make mistakes. One of the key things which I think our group is, uh, is good about is uh, almost like forgiving mistakes. I, if we think the guy is right, the person is right, we've given, we've given time. We have one manager whom we've given so many. I, I think in any normal organization, this person would have been fired in, I mean, probably three times in the, in the last four years uh, because of the way this person has uh, mistakes she made. But, uh, but we have uh, trusted her and uh, she's now uh, a huge leader of uh, some business she runs. Uh, so you have to give people sometimes second chance as well. That's uh, also uh, kind of, but you have to be sure these are the right people. So, okay, okay. Let's do two. We have these two guys. Let's do these two questions and then.
probably the organizers. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ying. I come from China. And uh, recently, you know, the Chinese technical company at Alipay and WeChat, they do some like financial creation. They funded some online bank without entity breaches, and we can just open an account and transfer remotely. But uh, some people are worried about the supervision because it kind of get out uh, get us some shadow please for the financial crime, crime like the money laundering or something like that and also somebody are worried about the safety so what's your opinion about how do we do the supervision in kind of something like the financial creation uh, thank you I think that uh, I, I fully agree with you that's the big challenge but that's also working the other way around i.e. the fact that we're moving away from cash is a huge uh, is a huge uh, advantage towards moving away from money laundering and a lot of illegal activity. I agree with you. That's a huge uh, challenge. Uh, one of the uh, histories we have is uh, uh, we know of one payment services company which wasn't given loans, and so Russian Central Bank almost caught it and and t took away their license uh, because basically they had a lot of account turnover but not a lot of loans. So they thought there was going a money transfer. And transfer means illegal activity, and they kind of killed that business, uh, although this was an okay business. Uh, I mean, as it appeared afterwards. I mean, nobody knows exactly the details right now, but in my opinion, uh, I mean, I don't know the recipe, what to do with the uh, Alipay and others, but. In my opinion, fundamentally, I personally believe in goodwill and in, in, in good intentions. For example, I believe that uh, the owner of Alipay will invest himself into not having illegal activity in his entities, uh, even to the standards higher than the central bank will require. But then, let's not forget that central banks and authorities are quite powerful they don't necessarily need a lot of reasons to come into your company whether you're licensed or not. Uh, as far as Russia is concerned, I think a lot of activity is licensed and Russian Central Bank is quite rigorous to make sure that people do not do them in an unlicensed way. So far they've succeeded, but we'll see how it goes. This, but I agree that's the big challenge. Uh, hello, my name is Fechenkov Alexei, uh, TM11. Uh, what do you think about uh, Bitcoin? Uh, this is uh, uh, n another economic bubble or new or future universal currency? Uh, I think uh, some form of, un of uh, this kind of currency will, will, will happen one way or the other. Uh, Bitcoin, I'm not personally sure, uh, will happen, but uh, nevertheless. Um, I do believe in the technology on which Bitcoin is based blockchain. That I believe about in some applications in some of the ways. Uh, so that I believe. But uh, whether it's going to be Bitcoin or whether it's going to be something else, I don't know. Uh, I think the central banks uh, will fight a little bit, but uh, whether they'll be able to survive and... Uh, in my opinion, it's just impossible to stop technical progress. I mean. Uh, at certain point, people invented the will, but I'm sure there's going to be, there were people who were saying that we shouldn't use the will because basically let's 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 just walk. And uh, I think eventually it's quite clear who who kind of uh, who kind of won that battle. And in my opinion, it's going to be the same with sort of bitcoins and so on. How in the, in which form? I don't know. Uh, the problem with the bitcoin is that a lot of legal uh, from what I understand, a lot of illegal trade of money transfers are using this. And this kind of creates a little bit of a suspicion and so on. Authorities want to control those things. And unfortunately, I think they have more than a lot of ways to actually do this with the camera on the streets and with, with our iPhone usage and so on and so forth. So, so I think with the currency, it's, it's going to be the same. But I think some form of virtual currency, it's going to be... Finally enough, I think our uh, this kind of money, I think, will become virtual quite soon. Uh, and they move and move uh, virtual. For example, I'll give you a small example from my life. I rent a small space somewhere, like a storage space. 
I used to go every month or every three months to the guy to pay a small number of rubles for this rent. I, I don't do it anymore. I just transfer it from my credit card to his credit card via mobile app. Uh, and the same happens all over the place. So, so I don't need this anymore. I just, I just more and more use an app for this. I sometimes actually, the only reason why I have money is, uh, is because uh, of the just in case uh, road police or some other form, uh, there's still some cash forms of, uh, of use of cash. Not necessarily bribes, but just to pay a fine and not to bother with this bear bank to pay a fine and so on. So, so, I, so that's why I personally keep a bit of cash. Uh, but I think otherwise you mostly don't need it. I think we used up our time. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.